Hi there, construction coach here. I'm going to take this old curvy washer and show you step by step how to turn it into something super lovely like this one. This video is part of the Luxury Bathroom Renovation Playlist. Follow along to watch the whole project come together. In today's video, I will show you how to install this beautiful earth grey marble floor. I will install a half inch plywood subfloor to the existing tongue and groove OSB glued and screwed. The floor thickness is now inch and a quarter to inch and three eighths thick. If you are going to use plywood as a subfloor, make sure it is exterior grade so it will never swell. Seal your grout and silicone all edges to prevent water penetration. One foot by two foot tiles are the largest I will install without an uncoupling membrane. Check out my other video, How to Install Plywood Subfloor, for more details. To cut the stone, I will be using this 10 inch rigid wet saw. I will cut most of my tiles outside because of the water spray. This is a new 7 inch V20 cordless wet saw from Craftsman. I will have this with me upstairs for scribing tiles and smaller cuts, saving me a trip downstairs. The water from this saw does not spray all over, making it a super helpful tool. If you have any tool related questions, send me a message to tools at constructioncoach.info. For material related questions, send to materials at constructioncoach.info. Here's a close look at the floor after I remove the wedge and lippage free clips. It's looking really, really good. Now let's take a look at the whole process so you guys can do the same on your project. Just picked up the tiles. I am unloading them and checking for defects, cracks, and chips. Some stone is very fragile. With the subfloor all ready to go, it's time to start the dry fit of the tiles. I'm using the same tiles on the walls in the shower and on the walls behind the sink and cabinet. So I'm going to take some time to really figure out this layout. My dry fit started. I went center of the vanity and started there. Coming down this way. Now, I would like to lay the tiles this way when I go up the wall. And obviously when I go up the wall there. And when I go up the wall here. But one problem that I'm seeing with this the tiles are exactly one foot by two foot. So when I switch the direction like this, the grout lines don't line up if I leave this space. After realizing that the tile on the floor running this way is not gonna be able to run up the wall going this way, I think for my dry fit for the homeowner, I'm gonna spin the floor tiles to run this way so that up this wall I can turn this direction and still have all my grout joints line up. Now my grout lines going up this wall will line right up with my floor. Which would happen the same on this wall. I would mimic whatever happens here up onto that wall and then go from there. These are a couple things that I was asking the designer if we should go center a cabinet. But now looking at this it will land weird on the shower wall. So I gotta ask what the focal point's gonna be for her. I might wanna use that shower wall, mimic on here and carry the detail down onto the floor up on this wall. The homeowners did decide to go with a full tile on the shower wall. I will set the floor layout accordingly. The tile will then go around the stub wall and line up with the shower wall. After vacuuming the floor, I will give it a good wipe down with warm water. Then I will start the dry fit layout. I start my dry fit. Place first tile working my way to the heat register, making sure I remain straight on the layout line. Once I'm at the register, I'm going to lay out the cuts necessary. With the tiles cut around the register, 
and my tiles are on the layout lines perfectly, I will do some final checks. My goal is to get the first three rows installed and do under the cabinet tomorrow. Everything's looking great. Time to get started. Remove dry fit, mix up all set, thin set, and begin back buttering tiles. Back buttering is very important to create the bond between the stone and combed thin set. I will back butter on all tiles 8 inch by 8 inch or larger. With the putty knife, use all set and skim an 8 inch of thin set to the back of the tile. Not necessarily get right on the edge, stay back like an eighth so you're easily able to pick these tiles up without getting thin set all over your hands. Here is the trowel I'll be using, half inch by half inch notch trowel. Follow the directions supplied by the thin set manufacturer to determine your trowel size. I start by spreading the thin set on the plywood. Flatten it down and comb through it with the notch side of the trowel on the perfect 45 degree angle. Careful not to cover your layout lines. The first tile is very important. Set it perfectly on the layout lines and firmly press into the thin set. Slide the clips under the tiles and move on to the next. Once tiles are firmly bedded into thin set, Install wedges into the clips. If using lippage free clip and wedge systems, the best way to install is pretend you are not using them and do your best to level tiles with each other by pressing firmly into the combed thin set. Then install wedge into clip to fine adjust and hold tile perfectly. After installing the first three rows, I will go under the cabinet tomorrow. The camera angle under there will really highlight the combing of the thin set. For you DIY builders, let's watch the rest of these three rows. Really pay attention to the technique and flow as I work my way towards the door, ending day one. That was my first install with this lippage free wedge and clip system. It worked really, really well. One thing you gotta make sure is get full adhesion of the tile to the mortar uh, before you use these clips. So I can see a common mistake already is that people will be not combing their thin set properly and relying on the clips to even things out and then there won't be any thin set underneath corners and stuff. So still very important to comb your thin set out on that 45 degree angle, keep it as consistent as possible so that you have full bedding underneath the tiles when you use these clips. One nice thing about these clips is how easy they break away. Hit clip with shoe or plastic mallet in line with grout joint. Make sure to hit the clip straight on, softer stone, may show small chipping if done incorrectly. Now let's clean up and get ready to install the rest of the tiles underneath the cabinet. Back buttering the next set of tiles, these are the tiles pre-cut to finish the rest of the floor. With the thin set perfectly combed out, I will start the install. I'm working my way and pressing down and one of my tiles just cracked. I had a little bit of thin set sticking out past the other side and when I was pressing it caused it to crack. I'm just going to carry on with the install because I've got those tiles back buttered and ready to go. And then once I'm done I'll come back and scrape that out and reset that tile. Thank you. 
This floor has turned out really, really well. I'm going to break out the remaining clips and do a final cleanup of the floor and start working on the wall tiles. Now that the floor is in final position, it'll be easy for me to carry up over that stub wall and get on into the shower. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see what's next, watch the luxury bathroom playlist. Here's a sneak peek of all the tasks involved.